Welcome to our Thursday morning gathering brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. <clears throat> this is a place where we invite experienced mindfulness instructors to speak with us about what mindfulness means to them and to discuss as a community how we can incorporate these practices into our daily lives. I'm Suzanne Rowe Palacino, and I am here as always on Thursdays with Tara Healy, founder and director of Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare's mindfulness program. Good morning, Tara. Good morning, Suzanne. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, so nice to have everyone here this morning and to finish up our, our week, getting towards the end of the week and finishing it up together as we explore this world of mindfulness. Um, today, Tara will start us off with a question and then lead us in about a 12-minute guided practice. And after that, we'll have time for questions and any sharing of information that folks would like to do. So I'd like to guide you to the bottom of your Zoom screen where you can open up the chat. And when you do that, there is a blue drop down menu at the bottom that says uh, hosts and panelists. You can change that to everyone to allow your comments to be seen by everyone here. And uh, so Tara, as we yeah. start off this morning, what is the question that you have for the group? Yeah, thank you, Suzanne. Um, so some of you might know we've been partnering with the neuroscientist Dr. Amishi Ja, she wrote a book called Peak Mind. And um, we had a webinar with her yesterday and um, there was a question related to ADD and uh, mindfulness, how mindfulness might help. And, but she responded actually more broadly and um, talked really about practices that one can do um, even when feeling anxious or overwhelmed and as a, and not that those would not be sitting practices that that's not where she would start and um so i started thinking more about how there are other ways that we can cultivate mindfulness um it doesn't have to just be sitting on a cushion or in a chair uh, that is certainly uh, a valuable way to practice, and I, I would encourage that. Um, but I started thinking more about just bringing mindful awareness to everyday activities as we move our bodies throughout the day, you know, whether that's gardening or out for a walk, and to bring mindful awareness into kind of daily life. So my question is, what's one thing that you could do today to bring full awareness? Um, and it could really be, uh, it's just a way to, to begin to really, to practice more informally. Um, I remember this is a number of years ago, one of, uh, my teachers talking about a student saying she had five children and a really busy life, yet she, she really wants to practice so that she can have some more ease and steadiness. And um, he actually directed her to her everyday activities and just going from autopilot to just full awareness. Um, and the idea isn't that we do it with every single thing we do, but like I started thinking maybe there's one thing that I could do today that I habitually do and don't necessarily bring it's just habitual. I'm not bringing awareness to. So Suzanne, do you want to uh, kick us off and then I'll say, and then we can, um, yeah. Yeah, I um, I do tend to, um, my, my first walk with my dog, I tend to be very goal oriented, like get him to go to the bathroom <laughs> and that it, you know, it's a walk around the terrace behind my house. And it, I just feel like it would be nice to be a little bit more mindful of him and his movements and the and nature and what's happening and yeah, you know, just be a little bit more present. So that's something I, I think I would think about. Yeah, it's so interesting because thinking also about how Amishi talked about flashlight more focused, but then um, there's also that other kind of awareness, which is more open and spacious that you're referring to. And, um, and that those are all ways to, to practice. Yeah. Um, now, how about you? Yeah. So for me, well, I started thinking about how, when I do laundry, I'm really, I should pay more attention to mixing things, but I don't, I just kind of like throw it all in there. 
But I'm like, oh, you know, I could actually be more conscious of how the clothes feel in my hands and the actual act of placing in. I mean, I know this is just like a simple thing, but I do it without a lot of thought. And um, it's, you know, again, like these are just small moments of practice that matter. They count. And so, yeah, I'm, yeah. I have to do laundry a little later. So that'll be, that'll be a good thing to practice with. Yeah, no, I like that. The everyday things I think um, mean more when we pay attention to them because they do get to be so like robotic. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think of Greg Topaki and one of our other teachers who talks about how amazing it is that we can actually get in the shower. Like, think about how this is yeah. a really amazing thing. Yes. Like, it's bringing gratitude to it as well. Right, is right. a whole other, you know, practice yes. that we can throw in, but yeah. yeah no, completely. So mm -hmm. I'm curious what's uh, coming up. Oh, yeah. Well, brush. Mindful eating work really well for me. Mindful eating. That's a good one. Yeah. I love this question in practice. I can slow down and take five minutes for awareness when I eat. I have a hair appointment today, mindful in the chair, feeling the water. What is someone else touching my hair? Definitely. Yeah. Shopping vegetables. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Focus on what others are saying at book club tonight. Hmm. Yeah. Sit with my coffee without paper. Mm. Oh, yes. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. In my teeth. Mm-hmm. Yes, the Thich Nhat Hanh washing my yeah. dishes. Yes, for sure. Yeah, like so and, and, and these, on it you. matters. These these um, things we do in our daily life, when we bring full awareness to it, it matters. And I, you know, I often think too, like to just compare qualitatively the difference between being present and not being present, and. Um, Brenda, <laughs> tripping over myself at Zumba. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. When you, that's yeah. a place that if you, if you are not paying attention, you could easily trip over yourself. That's, that's good yeah, on that's you for doing Zumba. That's hard. Yeah. And, and listening, Teresa. Yeah. I mean, um, really interesting practice, right? Because if you're going to listen, you've got to be fully present like you're just going to miss what the other person is saying. And that's not an easy thing because oftentimes when someone's speaking to us, we're formulating all kinds of thoughts about what they're saying, as opposed to really just being completely present with them. So just like we have so many opportunities in really everything we do throughout our day to cultivate this you know, quality of being uh, present, awake and aware for, for our lives. So it doesn't have to just take place on a cushion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. And I, I like that Heather is told, uh, brought in going to the grocery store, which if oh, yeah. you, I've been noticing, especially at Trader Joe's where it's yeah. people are know exactly what they want. They want to get in, get out. And I've just noticed how people, you know, if you connect with people's faces, they can look from very stern to their face can light up, you know, yes. like people yes. smile at somebody, their face can just light up. It's they a beautiful, a yeah, person. Suzanne, that's a beautiful example, I think, you know, just really meeting eye to eye with another human being and softening the face, smiling, like it, there is that it matters to us as human beings. We, we desire that kind of, you know, feeling of connection with someone else. I mean, I think, yeah. So in, and so kind of in recognition of May being mental health awareness month, um, you know, there are many ways to support our, our sense of connection to each other. Um, yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah, so, for sure. That could be a, that could be a whole other other discussion. There's but, a lot that could be said for that sure. That may be my Wednesday discussion. Stay tuned. Oh yeah, yeah, Suzanne. Yeah. I yeah. There's so much that could be said, but let's go ahead and move um, into practice. And I think, as many of you know, I I do a kind of I'm very light on the guidance um, and give more um, more minutes of no talking. So that, you know, you really get to experience um, 
you know, the noticing when the mind slips in and pulling yourself back, but periodically I will, I will drop in, notice where the mind is. So, so let's go ahead and uh, settle in either, uh, you know, sitting or standing and take a couple deep breaths just as a way to settle in and settle any surface tension. So um, make the ex exhalation a little bit longer than the inhalation. And just allow the body to settle right into the seated or standing posture. And it's, you know, really to the best of your ability, surrender your weight into the support of the, the earth below. And knowing that support is there for you, that, that you are being held by the support of the earth. Notice any physical sensations or what physical sensations are making themselves known from all your activities so far. So that could be pulsing, vibration, temperature. Widen the awareness to include sound, sound in the room or outside of the room. And just a soft mental note, hearing, bringing awareness back inward, allowing sound to remain as it will in the background. So whole body awareness, again, with a spine that is straight but not stiff. So now you're holding yourself in a way that's engaged yet relaxed to the degree that you can. And let's go ahead and find an anchor for the wandering mind. So as you inhale and exhale, is there a place in your body where you feel that sensation most prominently? So that could be the rise and fall of the kind of belly, abdomen, chest, or nostrils. Could be just some movement, but without thinking about breath, but actually feeling into it. Where do you feel the inhalation and the exhalation? What, what part of the body? And it could be a narrow focus or a wider focus. Alternatively, feel free to use sound or a different body sensation. Could be the palms of the hands resting on the thighs. And so just kind of settling in and allowing the body to breathe in its own natural way this morning. However, your breathing is perfect. And go ahead and see what anchor is gonna serve you best this morning. And I would suggest you stay with that particular anchor throughout the remainder of the practice. So, you know, each time the mind wanders, which it, it's very natural, it will, like a whole bunch of times, a thought will slip in unnoticed. There'll be a point where you notice it, not a problem. Ah, thinking, soften the body, and then gently return awareness to whatever you're choosing this morning as an anchor.
And noticing where the mind is, allowing the thought or the memory or the planning to release, soften the body and escort the attention back to your anchor. And noticing where the mind is, releasing thoughts, softening the body, and returning to your anchor.
And as we bring this meditation to a close, may we be peaceful and at ease. May our heart be soft and open. May we be safe and protected and our bodies healthy and strong. May the merit of our practice be for the benefit of all beings. And as you feel ready, if your eyes were closed, you can go ahead and open the eyes. And uh, it's always helpful just to reorient to the room you're in. So I usually say, just kind of look around a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, so we have a few minutes for uh, Q&A um, or, you know, comments and, and also sharing. So if there are resources that you've come across, whether it's an app or a book or a um a series, you know, anything that you want to share, please go ahead and uh, let us know. You can go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, but of course, questions and comments in general. Um, Thank you so much, Tara. <clears throat> You're welcome. Yeah. I have one to share that I um, was meaning to share before. Um, this is another resource for gui any guided meditations that our um, folks are looking to connect with online. Yeah. Um, I went to UCLA, the um, uh, the Semmel Institute of Neuroscience, where I did my advanced training, and there is uh, there are a lot of guided meditations on their website. So I'm um, offering here the website where they have the free guided meditations, and they also have an oh, app. That's great. Yeah, so there's an app that UCLA has. Um, UCLA mindful um, that they have um, available. So you can connect with the app there. But my teacher does a lot of, um, she, every week, every Thursday, she does a live meditation um, session at the Hammer Institute. Um, so that's a resource. Yeah, the, you know, the other one, um, I use sound as my anchor. Oh, and found that realized my mind had wondered I'd lost track. Of the nice, oh, it's a, you wonder what else I'm missing. Yeah, so true, Karen. Mm. Yeah, it's a way to not miss your life, right? Um, it's a really interesting thing, you know, when if you've ever been driving on the highway and then you just get off of the exit and you're like, wait, how did I get here? Like, it's like there's this whole gap. Um, I know. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I don't want to forget to say the Healthy Minds app, Richard Davidson, Dr. Richard Davidson at the University of Wisconsin. It's a free app and they've committed to it always being free. So Healthy Minds, <clears throat> you can, um, yeah, just, just check that out. They have all kinds of programs um, and the app is free. Um, yeah, so yeah, it I looks like, that one. yeah, that's great. Yeah, it looks really good. I just downloaded it. Um, and I haven't uh, played around with it yet, but um, it, that he is so reliable, reputable, like there's no, you know, no worry at that. So I think, and that fact that it's free. Um, mm -hmm. And then of course, folks know, probably know Insight Timer has, yes. you know, that's just an amazing resource. So yeah. Um, Sarah, uh, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I think um, expanding, you know, the silence is valuable so that you can really, you get, you can see more where the mind wants to go. It gives you that kind of a bit of a gap. Um, yeah. yeah. And I'll also share the link um, for tomorrow. For the Wednesday session. Um, so that's the, uh, the registration that I just shared too from 8.30 to 9 tomorrow, our web meeting uh, format. So wait, yeah. oh, tomorrow. Um, I'm sorry. No, um, that's for Wednesday. Oh, I do. I That's for next Wednesday. Sorry about that. I okay. jumped ahead. Okay, um, that's and then one, one other thing to share for next week, Greg Topakian will be flying solo on Tuesday. I won't, I won't be here. I'll be um, traveling. So he will be here running the show on Tuesday. Okay. Um, 
Um, so just to let you know. And Jennifer, no, everyone's not on camera on Wednesdays. There's a real mix. Um, some people are off camera and if they have a comment, they'll just unmute. Some people do, just do everything in the chat and some people do completely on video, um, on audio. So yeah. it's really a, 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 a mix. I know it's a good, I love Wednesday because it's optional, you know, mm -hmm. that, um, and it allows for more dialogue. And um, I love how you run that session, Suzanne. Very, it's just inviting and easy to be there. Mm. Thank you. It's fun. I like, I like that. Yeah. It does mix it up. It's nice. And Teresa, I love how you've um, shared Rick Hansen. Um, he, mm -hmm. He's a wonderful teacher. This yes. This week on it, just one thing, focusing on growing inner strengths. Growing inner strengths. I love that. Um, yeah. I'll check that out. I get I get his emails every week. Um, yeah. yeah, he's and a really good teacher. Being Mental Health Awareness Month, I think, you know, that it's such an opportunity to sort of, you know, investigate the all of these various options that we have available to us. You know, so many that are freely offered really such a gift. Yes, it really is. So thank you, Tara, as thank always. You. Yeah, thank here. you. And thank you, everybody. Really good yeah. to see you. And Thanks. we will, I hope you have a good rest of your week, good end to your week and a good weekend. And we will see you next week. Okay, have a good day. Okay.